reveals biggest threat to the U.S. military, it's not who you think. In the event that you were asked what are the best dangers to our military, you may state ISIS and other terrorist groups. Or, on the other hand, you may point to North Korea and its nuclear weapons program consolidated with a truly unsteady leader in Kim Jong-un. On the other hand, you could express a developing worry over a conceivable clash with nuclear-armed Russia or China, which is turning into an undeniably enormous issue. However as worried as each one of those may be we have to search internally for the best risk to our military. Secretary of State Mattis has been testifying before different congressional boards of trustees and focuses the finger specifically at Congress as the single greatest risk to our military. In particular, the formal general claims that inadequate financing has done much to crash the readiness of our military to react to clashes. Also, that presents unsatisfactory dangers to our military. Via IJR, in his prepared testimony given to three different committees, Mattis declared that the Congress caused more harm to our troops than their enemies on the battlefield through inadequate funding and approval of budgets. I went back to the department, and I was shocked by what I saw about our readiness to fight, Mattis said. While nothing can compare to the heartache caused by the loss of our troops during these wars, no enemy in the field has done more to harm the combat readiness of our military than the sequestration. And yet, for four years our military has been subjected or threatened by automatic, across-the-board cuts as a result of a sequester, a mechanism meant to be so injurious to the military it would never come into effect. In addition, during nine of the past ten years, Congress has enacted 30 separate continuing resolutions to fund the Department of Defense thereby inhibiting our readiness and adaptation to new challenges. Mattis goes assist in hanging Congress out to dry for the harm it has done to our military availability. He says that Congress often failed to pass a budget on time or eliminate the threat of sequestration, and also blocked new programs, prevented service growth, stalled industry initiative and placed troops at greater risk. Congress has been put on take note. Should we confront the awfulness of fizzled or imperceptibly effective engagements, it won't take yearn for the duty to be followed appropriate back to Congress. What's more, in the event that we know a certain something, our chose delegates totally hate being considered in charge of their mix-ups. They will do most anything to abstain from assuming liability. Notwithstanding heading off to the point of passing enactment that really tackles issues. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. I. J. R. Valetta. Leaked. Insider evidence uncovered, Obama and Hillary's FBI guilty of betraying U.S. secrets, you'll be shocked. It just continues deteriorating for Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama's wallowing Justice Department. We've known for quite a while that Hillary has been under investigation for the mishandling of highly classified materials, however, we didn't know exactly how bold and messy she was. We're recently beginning to learn now that the previous presidential applicant played reckless with the tenants and more awful, she did it for quite a while. As per breaking news report at Fox News, Judicial Watch has released 42 pages of exceedingly redacted records from the FBI's criminal investigation concerning Hillary Clinton, and they don't paint a pretty picture. There is a wide range of redacted trades amongst Clinton and her private lawyers while utilizing absolutely unsecure devices. One redacted exchange reveals a back and forth subpoena response to the FBI from one of Mrs. Clinton's private attorneys, Catherine Turner and a partner at the Washington, D.C. powerhouse firm Williams & Connolly. In the document, Turner agreed to turn over one of Mrs. Clinton's non-secure Apple iPads and two of her Blackberries to the FBI. The problem is that nobody seems to find the 13 mobile devices identified by the FBI, the ones that potentially used ClintonMail.com email addresses. Convenient, is not it? Added Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton. We are presuming there are still 13 devices at issue. The new records show how badly the Obama Justice Department and the FBI mishandled the Clinton email investigation. They get the equivalent of wiped phones from the Clinton lawyers and do nothing? Damn great inquiry. The inquiry now is, what would be an ideal next step?
Without enough solid proof, Hillary could get off Sands shot. Once more. At any rate, we as a whole know one truth, it's a damn good thing Hillary Clinton never got the opportunity to be President of the United States. In view of all that we're discovering now, that would have been totally awful. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Fox News. Michelle Obama is back from hiding. It's worse than we could have thought. Michelle Obama appeared once again this week to continue on her paid speaking tour, earning up to six figures a speech. The former first lady was reportedly in Silicon Valley to join an open session of Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference for a fireside chat. She'll talk about empowering people from all walks of life, the company's CEO Tim Cook said. The company has become increasingly vocal about social and political issues under his leadership. Climate change is real and we all share a responsibility to fight it, Cook said after President Trump pulled out of the Paris Accord last week. I want to reassure you that today's developments will have no impact on Apple's efforts to protect the environment. We won't be surprised if Michelle uses the opportunity to bash Trump and attempt to undermine his decisions as well. man refuses to take down memorial on his lawn honoring fallen comrade in Korea. Recently, a Korean War veteran in Greenfield, Indiana started facing controversy with the Homeowners Association for a flagpole he erected in his front yard. According to reports, Robert Willits built the flagpole this past summer to display two flags, an American flag, and a black prisoner of war, missing in action flag. The second honors his brother that did not return from the Korean War. The Neighborhood Association claims the flagpole violates the rules they have established, while Willis has refused to remove the tribute to his brother, who is still in Korea. The association has made attempts to negotiate with Willis, offering him the opportunity to fly the flag on the community flagpole. If he refuses, the association will fine him up to $500. At this point, the couple has refused to pay the fine or remove the flagpole. Judy Willits, Robert's wife, claims that the situation feels un-American. The Willits have also received support from a group of Indiana veterans. What do you think of the incident? Billy Joel risks everything to defy Hollywood and do what no one else will for Trump. The liberal entertainment industry is full of actors and performers who are taking every chance they get to attack Trump on a public platform. There are only a handful of entertainers who seem to understand the value of keeping their political opinions relatively quiet, and legendary singer Billy Joel is one of them. According to Briet Bart, Joel said that in terms of politics, entertainers are more like court jesters than court philosophers. The star also explained that his fans don't come to concerts to hear him complain about the president. I try to stay out of politics. I am a private citizen and I have a right to believe in my own political point of view, but I try not to get up on a soapbox and tell people how to think," Joel said. I've been to shows where people start haranguing the audience about what's going on politically and I'm thinking, you know, this isn't why I came here," he added. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest cheers of the night comes when we do Piano Men and I sing, they know that it's me that they're coming to see to forget about life for a while, and the audience lets at this huge and I say, okay, yeah, don't forget that. Joel isn't the only one to urge actors to stay away from publicly discussing politics. I don't like to get involved politically at all. Nobody cares what I think politically, Josh Duhamel recently said. Shocking angry driver is sick and tired of protesters blocking the road, does something about it immediately. In the past few months, we've seen road blocking emerge as one of the most frequently used tools for protesters. Apparently, it's difficult for them to grasp that blocking the road, chanting FK the police, accomplishes nothing. In an undated and unknown video, posted by the Facebook group Trump supporters, protesters are shown blocking a highway. It appears to be a protest in Brazil, 
and you can see what looks like a black flag waving. At one point, a frustrated driver approaches the group, who rapidly descends on the car. The driver backs up for a second before flooring the gas, running over several protesters in the process. What do you think of this video? Are things bound to get out of control if this continues to happen?